Will you please welcome your author, Stan Jackson. Yeah. How embarrassing is this? I mean, I mean, I, it's this poacher turned gamekeeper role. It's, I, it just doesn't sit very comfortably. You know? <laughs> I mean, I was standing there thinking to myself, you know, Joe Brand and Digby Jones and my colleague JJ, and I thought, blimey, the speaker tonight must be good. <laughs> and then the penny dropped. <laughs> And I thought, oh dear, dear, dear. But the use of the word expert took me straight back to my school days. Because I had a teacher who specialised in ritual humiliation. <laughs> and he would call me out. Jason, I want you to stand on that chair. Oh, yes, sir. I want to tell you, Jackson, you must never describe anybody as an expert. Oh, why is that, sir? Because, you see, X connotes the unknown quantity. And a spurt is a drip under pressure. <laughs> well, you should know, sir. What was that? I said, I think it's going to snow, sir. Well, it was a, you know, I suppose a, a one way of... of getting used to the idea of speaking to people on the telephone a few years later. Not 150 yards from here, just down the road in Thayer Street, when we had some bizarre phone calls. Um, I'll give you a couple, if I may, just to, uh, just to see what I mean. Uh, we had one from Ruby Wax, um, and one from Dickie Bird. Uh, Dickie Bird, if you remember, had just uh, published the, the best-selling autobiography, uh, sporting autobiography of all time at that time. And, Said to be, said to have made a, uh, a million pounds. Uh, performing our teeth. Uh, we have a Mr. Bird calling from Barnsley. Will you accept the charge? <laughs> oh, yes, 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 yes. Uh, Hello, Stan. I hope you don't mind me uh, telephoning, but uh, I was visiting a friend in Sheffield and uh, I didn't want to put charge on his account, you understand? <laughs> um, so, so I, uh, yeah, oh, that's all right, Dickie, don't worry. But you see, I wanted to get to you as quickly as possible because um, I can do that there. The, the, the note you left on the answer, well, I can do that there. So I'll put it in the diary. And um, there we are, and I'll obey your contract. All right, Dickie, but there's only one problem. Oh, what's that then? Well, the client has asked if we could change the date to the following week. Can you do Wednesday the following week and not, you know? Oh, um, uh, right, um, uh, okay, then I'll, uh, I'll, just, I'll just pop into my office and check. <laughs> Now, if Top Gear ever introduces a new feature, the quickest and most efficient way of going from Sheffield to Barnsley, <laughs> the time to beat is 4.5 seconds. <laughs> Hi there, Stanley. Ruby here. Tell me about cricket, Stanley. I should explain that we had sent a contract to Ruby Wax. She was going to host a cricket benefit for Paul Weeks. I don't know whether you know Paul Weeks, but he had a benefit season a few years ago for Middlesex, I believe. And most of you know what a benefit is. At the end of the season, a cricketer who'd been loyal. And they have a big dinner on, probably on uh, Park Lane, and they raise money for the cricket yeah. Does he need the money, Stanley? Uh, well, well, yes, yes. Is he famous, Stanley? Uh, well, well, in a manner of speaking, you know. Has he got two families, Stanley? <laughs> um, but not as far as I know, Ruby. You know, like Ian Bolton. <laughs> Now, by now, I have Iris, 
and JJ is standing behind me telling me to tell Ruby all about taking guard, leg breaks, off breaks, googlies and Chinamen. Meanwhile, Ruby's conducting two other telephone conversations at the other end with Ed Bai and her agent Maureen Vincent. So the scope for confusion exists. <laughs> Did you say Google is Stanley? Uh, yes, yeah, yes, Ruby. Is that what they keep in their box, Stanley? Well, I mean, yes. And when they take guard, Stanley, what are they trying to protect? Uh, well, uh, I mean, normally they're middle stump. <laughs> Cricketers have a middle stump, Stanley? Well, well yes. What's it for, Stanley? Well, it's the bowl of maiden over, Ruby. <laughs> Can I see that, Stanley? Well, uh, I'd rather think you're going to, Ruby. <laughs> and that's how you get a briefing with Ruby Max. And it's detailed. But sometimes it's conversations you bump into people you're not expecting it at all. I mean, I would, Iris and I were on our holidays in the west coast of Scotland one year. And I did a very interesting thing. I walked into the local news agency. And I said, could I have a Daily Mail, please? And she said, would that be today's? <laughs> or yesterday's? So I said, well, you know, we're not used to a choice, quite honestly. <laughs> but if I have a choice, then, well, I think today's. <clears throat> oh, would you like to come back? <laughs> so there we are, there we are. Just one more, just one more. I was, when a speaker gets to this stage, a professional speaker, they look around the audience and uh, looking for a big finish. You know? And um, most of the ones I'm looking at now have got that sort of look of panic on their faces. And I can hear the rustle of a super injunction, you know, at 20 yards. So I will just comment on one particular person who is in the audience who is absolutely amazing. He was the voice of racing for so long. Wherever he is, please, uh, a round of applause for Sir Peter O'Sullivan. <laughs> the office one day and he said, Hello, Shaq, he said, uh, it's Peter O'Sullivan here, you know, what I'd like to do. How do you think this sounds? Well, I'm the star's orders. And he shows me like that. And off he went. You have to read the book to find the rest <laughs> of the story. <laughs> but I think the best advice that, and to get me out on a, a big finish, is, was given by Arthur Smith uh, last month um, on his special radio program on the Radio 4. I'm sure you heard it all about after dinner speaking, which actually starred the one and only, the incredible, the sensational Giles Brandreth. Yes, give him a big round of applause and a cheer. I'm not sure whether he made it yet. The guy has very, very kindly contributed a forward uh, to my book, and so if you buy it this evening, and if you buy Giles this evening, you get me thrown in for that. <laughs> and Arthur Smith's, Arthur Smith's actual advice was, never finish on a song. <laughs> now, I'm well known to have Van Gogh's ear for music. My friend James Hopgood, who wrote a musical with me a few years ago, has offered to hum an A for me, but frankly I really wouldn't know what to do with it if he did. So, instead, here is a song. Oh dear, what a calamity, I don't want to be a celebrity. I'd much prefer to stay a non-entity lacking in talent or flair. Oh. 
<laughs> but I've been reduced to selling these anecdotes. Authentic true stories with numerous direct quotes. Completely unaided by PowerPoint prompting notes. Just embellished a touch here and there. But oh my, what a calamity. I'm risking offending those self-same celebrities whose work in the past should have paid me so handsomely. But I find that I'm too broke to care. <laughs> so is this what it's like? To be a celebrity, creating personas detached from reality, while earning vast fortunes for my perpetuity, then it's a burden I'm willing to bear. <laughs> for it promises to buy me a crate of fine burgundy, a day at the races. A season at Highbury. <laughs> Alas, my team opted for Emirates obscurity. In short, they are no longer there. But if I can retain a semblance of sanity by keeping in line with the bulk of humanity, then I might just avoid a nasty calamity and leave memorable thoughts you can share.